In today's video, we're going to be building a Windows XP computer. We're going to be focusing on a Windows XP gaming computer that is both small and pretty fast too. We'll be using this thrift store find of a small form factor case uh, that already was housing a Core 2 Duo system. We'll be reusing this and swapping some parts over to make a pretty fast but very very compact and silent gaming computer based around Windows XP. Let's get started and let's take a look at the parts that we will be using in this build today. Now let's get this old system out of the way first. There we go. Much better. Alright, now that we've seen our blank canvas for this small form factor Windows XP build, let's take a look at the components that we've selected so far. The old board is here on the left. This is an Intel G31 based motherboard. Pretty basic feature set, we have two RAM slots, socket 775, one PCI Express 16X and two PCI slots. It's overall a pretty limited board but it is very stable. I've been running this system on this for a few months and this board is 100% solid. It likes a couple of features, it doesn't have a floppy connector. As we know, real computers do have floppy drives and I do intend on using one. We do have other creature comforts like USB, uh, Firewire, Four SATA ports, they're all version 2.0, so that's good enough. We have IDE on this one, and uh, well, that's basically it. There's a whole big uh, absence of ports on the back there, so overall, pretty limited type of motherboard. When we go to the right hand side, we have an ASRock G41MS, also supports DDR2 memory. Dual channel DDR2 1066 is the max. This port supports up to 800. Socket 775. Slightly different overall layout, would have an 1NX slot, 16X slot, and two PCI slots. And, as a nice bonus, we have a header for a floppy drive, which is excellent. And uh, overall, this should actually support some uh, light overclocking, which I do intend on doing. Alright, so now we can also take a look at all of the other components that make up a computer. Obviously, we need a graphics card. And because we're very limited in terms of what we can use, because the case is a low profile variety, what we see here is the card that I was actually using until now. This is a PNY NVIDIA GeForce GT730. This is a very interesting version of the 730. This is using the later Kepler GK208B uh, graphics chip, which also used in the later re releases of the GT710 but it only has one gigabyte of DDR3 memory. So it is a full GT730 core, basically, but it does not have uh, the best type of memory it could have, because there was also a variety with a full 16x slot, like the one over here. This is another GT730, because it is the fastest card, aside from GT740, uh, based on Kepler that you can use in a low profile form factor and um, yeah this has a full 16x slot this has the same full 384 shaders but this one has 2 gigabytes of memory and it's GDDR5 it's still a 64-bit bus but it is GDDR5 this should be quite a bit faster so one thing I'll be, I'd be very interested in is a comparison between the two I know from the top of my memory that this card will not run uh, Fallout 3, for instance, very well. Uh, not uh, with all the fancy effects turned on. Maybe this will make the difference. I'm very interested in seeing that. But uh, we'll get to that once, uh, once we get there. Other important components include the memory. We're going to be using 2 gigabytes of DDR2, 6400, uh, or 800 megahertz. These are OCZ Platinums and uh, CO4, pretty fast. They worked fine on the Intel board, should work fine on the ASRock as well. Cooling wise, we'll use the Beefy 775 cooler with a copper slug. Should allow for some overclocking, as mentioned before. And we'll add uh, USB 3 for good measure. In terms of storage, SSD, simple, Kingston A400, and a CPU, an Intel Core 2 Duo. This is an E8500, I will be using the E8600 in the final build. Powering all of these components is of course the power supply. 
it is a be quiet unit. I'm not telling you to be quiet, but it is a pretty good power supply. This is a TFX form factor. This is a 300 watt, 80 plus bronze power supply. It's uh, plenty of power for what we're going to do with it. So uh, we have 260 watts on a 12 volt rail. Should be plenty for just, I know, about, uh, I don't know, probably about 50 watts worth of GPU power and maybe 100 watts worth of CPU power. So. It's really not going to be all that powerful in the end, or power hungry rather. This power supply has been running this system for months. Uh, in its previous state with the Intel board, I think this will do just fine. I'd be very interested in seeing how well this power supply handles a uh, beefier system overall with a much faster core to duo. We're going to aim for 4 gigahertz clock speed. That should allow us to at least max out the GT730. Because if notice that at stock speeds, even that little DDR3 card is not running at 100% yet. So there's still room for improvement for sure. Alright, we're in the BIOS now. Very nice. Set a couple of settings here. I'll go for optimized. I'm not going to tweak too much just yet. We don't really know what this CPU can even do. Alright, let's set this to 800 megahertz. 44415 is good. Should say 2.5 volts. 
I was mucking about with this a little bit before. Can't just set this to auto. Apparently not. Sorry about that. I cannot set it to oh right. Auto. There we go. Oh, I'm blind. Right, so we don't want any intelligence, so we'll keep that disabled. Yep, I want some energy saving features. Let's see. I want to enable smart. It's definitely very nice to have. Don't want to set up anything else there. That's all good. We have a floppy, that's good. Parallels disabled, also good. USB is enabled. We'll set the CPU fan speed to go to low because it's very loud and it doesn't really appear to need that cooling right now. It's sitting at 33 degrees in a very cramped case in a reasonably warm room, so honestly, not too bad. We'll save these settings and hope that it uh, actually accepts the memory speeds. I have some feeling that this board is not really much of an overclocker when it comes to the CPU, but we'll have to do some tweaking there. And let's see good old Windows XP booting up. Takes a little bit. You'd think it'd be very fast with his. Uh... There we go. You'd think it'd be very fast, but honestly, SSD on XP is not quicker than a hard drive at all. This is the existing install, by the way, from the other Intel motherboard. And uh, yeah, it should use the same drivers for chipset and all that. In theory, I should even be able to use the same drivers for the NVIDIA GeForce GT 730. It should already have the latest for Windows XP from NVIDIA. And it has found the drivers. These are not local certified. Which I do not really give a much about. Let's put it that way. Oh, look at that window animation. It's so smooth. Alright. I'm going to go through all of this, do a nice little reboot, and then we'll get back once everything's up and running. Okay, it has booted up once again. We're ready to take another look at it. Uh, it appears that we have a good resolution going. We'll see what it's running at. It's running at 1920 by 1080. This monitor can do up to 1440p, but I am pretty sure that this GT730 is not able to do that over HDMI because it's using an older GPU revision. I think uh, you need one generation newer Maxwell for uh, a newer HDMI standard. Uh, something we want to try find out is whether GPU-Z is on here somewhere. I think it should be. I know I've used it before. Let's use CPU Z first so you can get a look at what's in the system. Our Wolfdale Core 2 Duo is showing a just fine. We'll give it a bit of a zoom here so we can get a better look. We have our Wolfdale Core 2 Duo here. It does not appear that uh, Speedstep is doing much, but that's okay. Our BIOS is from 2009. I'm going to guess and say that there is a newer BIOS available. We're going to see if we can flash that later. Memory is running at the correct speeds. All right. 
and again we have a GK208 GPU which is correct the other card was a GK208B slightly newer revision well it is a B as well it's a B1 but the other one I guess is a B2 or something that's okay we have 2 gigabytes of GDDR5 in this one which is an upgrade let's see what kind of temperatures we're getting it's running at about 34 degrees same as the CPU all is fine and dandy okay so I guess what we really need to do is uh, run a couple of benchmarks and see how it fares in there so uh, let's do a round of 3D Mark 06 very fitting for a game uh, or a system of this era this was the latest DirectX 9C benchmark that they released everything after this was meant for DirectX 10 and higher so no 3D Mark Vantage on here we're not running Windows Vista so it's not appropriate either so yeah I guess we're just gonna let the benchmark run and you can see the results for yourself Alright, I've uh, finished dicking around, and uh, yeah, the system is running very well now. I've set up for 3.5 GHz, so it's running at that right now. Should be good to go. I haven't touched the graphics card in any way, so it should be good to go as well. I will check for sure, because I was applying an overclock before. But it has reverted. Okay, that's good. Alright. So I guess what we still need to do is, well, I was talking about running Fallout 4, uh, 4 3, not Fallout 4, that's too much for this. So let's see if we can now run it at uh, better settings. You know what? I set it for ultra high quality at 720p. Just go with the preset. Let's see where we left off and what our frame rate is going to be. All right, sixty FPS. That's good. But it's indoors, so it shouldn't be terribly hard. We don't need any loot from that guy. Alright. Supposed to go down there, but I honestly think we should find a place elsewhere so we can go to the overworld. It's looking very sharp, though. Very nice. This is one of the upsides of having a uh, 1440p panel. 720p is complete integer scaling. Very nice. Alright, so here is the exit to the capital wasteland. This is still early game. Alright. No lock 60 FPS, but it's better than it was. Before it was running at low settings, and this area was running sub 30 FPS, so. The GDDR5 is definitely making a difference, although some AA would, wouldn't hurt at all, but, you know. But this is perfectly playable for Fallout 3. This is not a fast-paced game at all. It's too clunky for that. A 50 FPS, I call that a win.
Now, obviously, we should run some kind of crisis, but I don't have that installed, and I really don't care about it. So, uh, yeah. This is designed to play the games that I want to play on it. Fallout 3 is not really one of the games that I really wanted to play on this, but I think it's a good way to, to, uh, to check. It's a very unoptimized game, and if that runs somewhat decently, you can just assume that anything made during the Windows XP times from about 2002 to about 2008 will probably run just fine on this. So yeah, I guess that really concludes this build video. There's still some little things that I need to do, tweak the system some more, uh, get comfortable with overclocking it, uh, silence the fan a little bit more because it's still very loud despite running at slow speed. Little things like that. Nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.